Welcome to Game Crunch Game of the Year 2022. With Brandon. You're supposed to figure it out. With Nick. I'm just asking for a game to explain itself correctly, and it doesn't. And Mike. And it is a disappointing game for a lot of people. There are many great games, but there can only be one. There can only be one game of the year. Welcome to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. I'm Mike Anastasia. With me today, we have Nick. Howdy. And Brandon. Hello. And it is more game of the year this week. Should be the rest of the game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's on the agenda? We have best story, best soundtrack. There is one category that should be spoiler, most story, best story. Most. Yeah, we can story. save that for last. <laughs> that will be last. That will yeah, be yeah the, that's fair. Should be the only spoiler category. We will warn you again when it comes up. I would need to beat God of War Ragnarok before this podcast ends and start it. So <laughs> don't know how we're going to do that. I can I can play the vague card. I can do that if you want me to. That would be cool because that honestly, like I have no horse in that in the God of War Ragnarok race because I actually have not played it yet. I am starting that this week. So well, if it you is could, a very good game. If you could just kind of dance around things, that would be phenomenal. Anyways. You could say agenda. what makes a story so good without spoiling it. I feel, and I, I think yeah. I could do something. Yeah. I think I can. I think I got you, Nick. I think I got okay. you. Okay, appreciate that. Well, the most of the story is the ride, anyways. I feel. Uh, many yeah. people do not feel that same way, myself included. When people spoil something for me, I get really upset. Well, it depends on what the spoiler is, I guess. True. Too. You yeah. know, there are certain things that like make bigger differences than other ones. Uh-huh. And this is a hot topic to get into for spoilers, so we probably should just not talk about it right now. Yeah, we'll we'll get back to that later. Because <laughs> I was about to give examples, and I was like, well, no, this won't end well. I do want to say, before we like dive headfirst into it, uh-huh. we we kind of whiffed on something last week that I didn't What's realize that? till after the fact. What's that? Um, there's a game that we... It wouldn't have won, but mm-hmm. there's a game that we missed from Best New Series Entry. And okay. that was uh, Kirby and the Lost and the uh, Forgotten Land. Oh, uh, you know what? That's a very good point. Oh, Whiffed I bet it. that's also your. <laughs> what? Okay, gotcha. No, honestly, it's not because of anything of my personal list. I was actually listening to another podcast, Game of the Year episode, and I was like, oh, okay, we okay. forgot Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I thought we had put it in there too, or maybe no. at least I had thought about it and then decided against it. Yeah, I feel like we talked really about it and then we just forgot that we talked about like it. i said i don't i don't think it would have changed any of the outcome of that category i think arcia still would have taken our number one spot Absolutely. but we were yep. remiss in not mentioning that kirby fucking whipped ass and it was a very good game oh it did and i, and I yeah. agree i don't think it would have knocked splatoon off or probably even turtles no but, i don't think it would have either yeah but it was you're right it was an excellent game absolutely yeah kirby was great i almost put it in my top 10 so there's a little spoiler for you it's not in there but i almost put it in there <laughs> very good it's that it's good in it's... it's in there uh, somewhere on mine i don't know nice i don't know <laughs> i just know it's there. it might be on mine Ooh, what's that? <laughs> that's that's pretty much just you confirming that it is and that's the game that knocked uh, god of war from being anything other than an honorable mention because you know it's good I didn't play God of War, so it it's didn't fucking make my list. I know, that's why I said uh, Kirby, I think, is the game that made God of War not make the list, maybe? Did no, you no. Did you play Kirby? Okay, all right. Well, I figured, I figured, I, I mean, if, if you want me to get into this now, I can get into this now. No, that's, that's, no, 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 we'll do it, we'll do it then top ten. Yeah, we'll do it top okay, ten. fair, fair, fair. Anyways, let's get into the categories. Hell yeah, let's go. Um. All right, next category, best soundtrack. Nominees are Metal Health Singer, Neon White, Vampire Survivor, Sonic Frontiers, Bandit 3, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, Roller Dome, TMNT, That's Drome. Treasure's Revenge. Huh? Drome. The Euro Drome you. You're a Drome. Oh. Okay. And Beautifully Chronicles Damn. 3. I didn't put God of War on this list, even though its music's ac- excellent also. I probably we have too many. We do have too many. We do have a lot. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that God of War could show me that would shake me to the core let me see yeah there's plenty of mute like links in here so you can just listen to the songs and decide for yourself 
Uh, yeah. Um, so I didn't get this. So how are we gonna go about this? One at a time. Xenoblade or not? Xenoblade, oh, I, let me. Uh, I I mean I. My three specific four. I don't fucking know. What should we all pick? Like three or like two or like one or something? What should we do? And then we just mm-hmm. lower it down from there. Like I don't know. We could. We could go that way. Um. Let's see. Uh. Well, I mean, I guess the question is, like, I mean, I think I've listened to uh, a bunch of these musics mm-hmm. already. Okay. But, I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I'd be more predisposed to pick things that I have put on the list. I know, I know. Crazy. That's why I said I think we should all give, like, oh, let's let's do, oh, fuck. Let's do three. Let's do three apiece. And then if we agree on any of those three, then that makes it easier to uh, knock other things off. Okay. Um. I would do Pokemon, Xenoblade, and TMNT. I'm doing Metal Hell Singer, Neon White, and TMNT. All right, so there's there's definitely one that's across <laughs> the board for us here. Um, I'm doing Pokemon. I'm doing Sonic Frontiers, and I'm doing TMNT. All right, so TMNT is here to stay. TMNT, <laughs> locked in, baby. Yeah. Um, well, them turtles know. ain't going nowhere. So they shouldn't just gonna knock off the ones that are that we just none of us put in our three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can knock off Vampire Survivors. We can knock off. Uh, did you list Bayonetta? I don't remember if you did. Yeah, Bayonetta is. On yeah. It's on there. Okay. Uh, you can knock off Rollerdrome. Uh, I was just trying to find music, so I was just putting things in here. I love Neon White. Neon White, a hundred percent deserves to be on this list. Also, recommend listening to Rollerdrome because it's created with like ancient old music, and it's like like musical instruments and stuff and it's like really interesting the way the person made it so uh yeah super cool and interesting sounding album but these others are better <laughs> fuck you know i'm sitting here i'm like thinking to myself i like sonic frontiers music a lot too <laughs> Nick. i let me tell you something i yeah. have been listening to a lot of that music this week all, all i'm thinking is like disappearing <laughs> oh or, the, yeah. or the the fucking uh the the emo song that plays during the first boss fight. Love that song. <laughs> it's absolutely so good. absolute banger. <laughs> oh yeah, certified. All right, let's have two on here for sure because you know what? Uh, Sonic Frontiers and TMNT deserve to stay on this list no matter what. Mm-hmm. I really want to fight for Neon White and Metal Hellsinger, but I know I can only fight for one of them. And I know no one here is a metalhead, so I can't really fight for Metal Hellsinger. First off, yes. I will not take that slander. <laughs> what? what I'm, um, I like metal. How? Okay, have you listened to the music in Metal Hellsinger? Yes, it's then? very good. It's fucking excellent. It's so good. Like, you could just listen to it as an actual album. Uh, yes. And then the music plays so well with the actual game itself. Okay, fine. I'm still fighting for Metal Hell Singer and Neon White. They're t- they're my two favorite albums of this this year, easily. <laughs> Let me see. Did I listen? I think I felt like I listened to the one for Neon White. Oh you shit! Just, yeah. You're right. Listen to it. It's so good. <laughs> and then you can just you can um I believe you could no wait I didn't put the whole thing the whole album's online. You should just listen to like clips from any of the other songs also they're just incredible yeah. now like Jesus. imagine this music right nick like you're hearing yeah. it right now speed running first person shooter with card game elements it's literally built to be a speed running game and I this music say, is playing during it i will say uh-huh. this singular track is better than any of the non-emo songs in sonic frontiers absolutely uh-huh. absolutely because immediately like i'm bobbing like there's a lot of the songs in Sonic like do annoy me a bit only because uh-huh. of the amount of times that I have had to listen to them. <laughs> but like this is this Dude, is like Neon White is like cheating. It is literally the entire album's made by Machine Girl. It's just cheating. It Neon is White cheating. is just cheating. <laughs> oh yeah, this is cheating. <laughs> but it's so good. There's not a single bad track in that. Oh, this, wait, hold on. I gotta listen to this from the beginning. There's a, another song that I found from Neon White called uh, House of Cards. That was good. Fucking heavy-ass bass in the beginning. Love that. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I will honestly <laughs> concede Sonic Frontiers to Hell Neon White. Oh yeah, let's go Neon White. Keep that bitch in there. <laughs> Is this Neon White was already on my list. I was gonna get it for Steam Deck. Um, you should. I still plan on doing so. Sixty FPS all times. But like the fuck? This music's this music f- whips ass. Absolutely does. 60 FPS all times on Steam Deck, Nick. It's so good. All right. I have it on <laughs> Steam Deck. That one has not left my Steam Deck since I've installed it. Very good. Okay, yeah. Definitely definitely a big fan of Neon White being a part of this, then. Let's go! Um, what about Metal Hellsinger, though? <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Again, Metal Hellsinger almost feels like cheating because it's literally all my favorite bands as a kid uh, come back together to make a fucking bitching soundtrack that works perfectly with the game. Um, let me see here. This devastation, uh, b- with uh by Trivium from Metal Hellsinger, fucking banger, absolute banger. See, I will say the yeah. only issue. That is. Let me see who does Metal Hill Singers. Like, does what? Uh, sound. There we go. I just want to see who's all on the soundtrack because I'm oh, pretty it's, sure it's, it's metal, but it's not metal that I. Like, uh, it's not, I don't think it's any group that I've listened to. Damn, Dark Tranquility, Arch Enemy, Lamb of God, Dark Lamb Tranquility, of God, Blah. Trivium. Oh my God, these soil ads. work. Fuck off. System of a um, Down. All right, System of a Down. Yes. But that's okay. That's actually not fair. Um, <laughs> that's the only one. Uh, that's, that's okay. Cause, oh, I, yeah, uh, Lamb of God's fine. Um, Lamb of God's really good. I like Lamb of God. So, um, okay. I still do really like to shift it. Um, like the the music from Pokemon Violet and Scarlet a lot as well. Yeah, I do too. I, I do know, too. Toby Fox, hello. It's Toby Fox. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and obviously, uh, TMNT, Short of Revenge, has fucking Mega Ran in it, as well it as does. Ghostface Killer. So, yeah, like... And Raekwon. Don't forget Raekwon. Oh, sorry, sorry. And Raekwon. <laughs> it's a song about pe- eating pizza and shit. Yeah. So for me, my top three, yeah. Definitely, like, TMNT, Pokemon, and now Sonic Frontiers got kicked out by Neon White. Because Neon yeah. White fucks. So we're booting yeah, White does fuck. Nobody's yeah. Gonna, yeah, we'll remove Sonic from here. All right, goodbye. Right well, I will. I will still say though, if not for nothing, the soundtrack of Sonic Frontiers is probably the best reason to play Sonic Frontiers. Which, if so, you can just go on Spotify and listen to the soundtrack. I played more Sonic Frontiers this weekend. I still like Sonic Frontiers. I, it's, I, it's fine. It's fine. I think it's an, a good game. <laughs> I listen. Yeah. When. It's Listen, like I didn't say it was an excellent game. I didn't even say it was like a very good game. I just said it was a good game. Sonic Frontiers is like if I went to go have dinner every night and instead of like the food that I've cooked that I'm about to eat, if a small man just ran up and punched me all the time. Oh. And then Sonic Frontiers, I was like, "Oh, look, the food I prepared. I get to eat it and it's fun." <laughs> you know what you know what okay okay fine fine (laughs) like i i explain sonic frontiers to my friends who really like it a lot as the crumb of pussy of sonic games (laughs) and they're like you're not wrong i don't want to admit it but you're not wrong because it's like the first like halfway decent sonic game that we've gotten in a while everybody's like shit in their pants over it, and I'm like, eh, it's fine, but... Okay, this is what you guys want, I guess. It's cool. Sonic Frontiers is, like, what you get after no done. <laughs> it was? Well, yeah, it's, no, I was gonna make a joke and be like, Sonic Frontiers, uh, every Sonic game leading up to Sonic Frontiers was, like, No Nut November. Oh and then God. the Sonic Frontier. <laughs> that's what people are acting like. I think Sonic Frontiers is really good, okay? That's just, that's just me. Oh, wow. uh, apparently that's other people as well because i mean you, you're having a fight with them too <laughs> i'm not gonna sit here and say that it's like the fucking next like Sonic frontiers next coming for me whatever. is like sorry yeah. so very very oddly specific cut into my world 
but mm -hmm. like a friend of mine and I like recently got, like reconnected this past year and mm -hmm. he was like hey because we went to like a smash tournament and mm -hmm. he's like hey you want to get dinner after this I was like yeah sure and we ended up getting Applebee's now I'm a historically known as an Applebee's hater but I was like, I don't have a better suggestion, so like, I guess I'll go. And like, the meal was fine. <laughs> so like, the, Sonic Fron the meal was Sonic Frontier. <laughs> the meal was Sonic Frontiers because I went into Applebee's expecting to get basically shit, and I was like, okay, that wasn't terrible. I feel about Applebee's what? too. It's like one of those places that's like, oh no, man, it got me a gift card for them. I think yeah. a year or two ago, and I was mm -hmm. like, well, I'm like, it's not ever a place I would go to. Because I want to. No. I only ever I go to Applebee's to. if I'm drunk. I won't be upset if I get like a gift card there. I'll be like, I'm yeah. sure I'll find something that like is tolerable. Yeah. They they sell drinks there for cheap and also jello shots for like quarters. So that's that's what Applebee's know. is for me. I did not know the bees sold jello shots, but now I'm yeah. more inclined to go. I did not know they did either. I, I, I literally, like, okay, so when I was in college, um, I would go to Applebee's and then pay, like, 50 to 75 cent for, like, you know those, like, little cups that they put, like, the spurt of ketchup inside of? Yeah. Okay. They would put jello shots inside of that, and they would have way too much fucking um, uh, vodka inside of them, and it would just be, like... You you pay like maybe three dollars and you're completely fucked. Oh, yeah, because they bought, <laughs> they bought a fifty five gallon drum of Burnett's for like ten dollars, and they're like, we gotta get rid of this shit. Are you sure it wasn't just like some like sketchy ass thing that some one of the people was? Every doing single one of the Applebee's I went to would do that. So yeah. I mean, well, it might yeah, be a sketchy ass Apple Southern Apple. thing. Like that's all I know. But I'll I'll check a local Applebee's. I'll check one of the Northeast Applebee's. <laughs> Like, we would always go after, like, we had, like, game night or something, and there's like, who wants jello shots? Man busts out five dollars and buys, like, ten of them, and just starts passing them around the table. My god. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those are my three, if you're curious. Mm -hmm. So. I will concede Metal Hellsinger. Even though it should win, and it is absolutely fantastic, uh, as long as we keep Neon White and TMNT on there. Honestly, I feel like either one of those is, like, the straight-up winner. But I have to be fair to Mike, and I have to also re-listen to the music of Xenoblade 3, because I remember listening to some of Xenoblade 3's music and just being like, damn, this is so good. So I'm going to yeah. listen to a track right now. Okay. Nick, did you listen to the Xenoblade track yet? No. Listen to it. I feel like this is going to get complicated. I would drop uh, Pokemon for this shit. Legit, I would drop Pokemon for this shit. Yeah, I'd probably go Xenoblade over Pokemon, to be honest. Those drums are nice. Here we got here. The song is just so dramatic. I just can't with that. I love it. It sounds like if Sega made a JRPG in the, like, fucking early 2000s. That's what this music sounds like. Does that sound like Fantasy Star Online, Brandon? Thank you. <laughs> it's good. It's real good. It is fucking good. It's real good. Is this handpicked, or is this like a lot of tracks are like this? Oh, like, I mean, if you played Xenoblade 1 and 2, mm -hmm. like, you know I think this is better than either of those. That's why I'm masking. Oh, I mean, I th I think so. I mean, I think the music is just absolutely on point. I mean, it's the same, it's the same, like, group of people that did the soundtrack so you do have like some you know a lot of those kind of like grand like you know like xenoblade you know one had excellent tracks that are really well known like gower planes and basically all the smash yeah but i can hear like a, a bass guitar and some like heavy drums yes in this track. and it's like really good with that oh. added to it mm -hmm. and like that, i don't um... recall a lot of that in the original two xenoblade games that one, what is it? I'm trying to think of it right now. This has, like, Final Fantasy vibes, in my opinion. Like, where it's like, they go hard on the track. Like, that bass solo just there is like... <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. All right, cool. I'm trying to think, what is that Xenoblade Chronicles 1 song that had, like, a lot of the metal? Uh... Make this extremely easy for all of us. Drop okay. Pokemon, put in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, TMT wins. Yeah, that's fine. That gets <laughs> that works too because everybody kind of gets a piece. Yeah. <laughs> so it's neon white, 
than TMNT, than Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Everybody agree with yeah. that? Yeah. Nice. Th- this is a this is a really good song. You picked a really good track, Mike. The whole soundtrack's excellent. Like, I mean, it's... I'll have to listen to it because, like, this is just like this is good. This is really good. <laughs> But right, yeah, so TMNT, it's just it's just the best. It's so fucking good. Yeah, I don't think I heard a bad sound, song in that entire soundtrack for TMNT. There <laughs> isn't. <laughs> super, super impressed with that. Um, yeah, so best soundtrack, winner goes to TMNT, Shredder's Revenge, we'll learn up Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Neon White. Hell yeah. All right, next category. Most anticipated upcoming game of 2023. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Metroid Prime 4. I threw it on there. This has got to be the. I mean, why do you got to tease me like that? We know it's not coming out in 2024. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil 4 remake. Can I can I add like two more things because I didn't yeah. original I didn't get to. All right, cool. Typey type. Uh, I'll read while I'm ty- writing while you're writing. Bayonetta Origins, Raisin the Last Demon, Final Fantasy 16, Dead Space 2, Alan Wake 2, and there's one more. I'm sorry, I'm doing it. And... I'm doing Littering it. And... Oh, oh. I'll put it on for you. Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You're right. He's right. Uh, there, there's one more also. Ah. Uh, sh- oh. Uh, yeah. You lost. You had this me. Is just, this is all I have to. Uh, this is for me. This is for me. I've waited long enough for this game. All right. This is for me. And also, they 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 fought in a war to get this game released. This is for me. <laughs> okay. And Brandon Brandon added S period T period A period. L period, K period. It's Stalker! Period. It's Stalker 2! Fuck off! <laughs> R period 2. Bro, they ran to the borders of the Ukraine to get this game out. You, you respect these people! <laughs> yes, that's a, that's a list. I mean, it's always tough to talk about these, because we don't know. Like, Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, we know very little about. It's true. It's equal to one of the highest rated games of all time. You know what I think about it? Without yeah. saying, you would know, you know, we'll wait till we get to that part. We'll wait till we get to that part. I'll talk about it then. Are you talking about which game? Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. No, talk about it. That's what I'm just talking okay. about. Okay. All right. All right. My thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom is I feel like it's going to be like God of War 2018 to God of War Ragnarok. Oh, probably. probably. It's absolutely incredible, but it's just more Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I think it's going to be a very iterative sequel. I mean, but you know what the thing is, though, Zelda team they always surprise us. Like yeah. we're always like, oh, Majora's Mask is just using the same engine as Ocarina of Time. It's going to be the same game, and then it's not. Yeah, and then That's Twilight true. Princess is using the same engine as Wind Waker, and then it's really fucking different. So, and then, so I mean, we don't know. I don't. I I have no. I have no. This is. We know so little about this game. I have so. I my expectations are high. Because all the games usually do end up being very good. But I really don't know what to actually expect gameplay-wise. Part of me thinks it will be much more of the same. But they've already shown up those weird, like, arm powers or whatever. So I have no fucking clue what's going on. I think we'll be good. Um, I don't even know where I'd... I mean, I'm sh- I would think I'd put this... Up. If I was my doing my own top three, it'd probably be on there. But... Mm. Um, Metroid Prime 4. I'm just excited for it. I just want it to. I mean, I, you think you're going to will it into existence by saying it's coming out when I think there's I mean, literally nothing saying it. that it's coming out in 2023? I, I saw the article making the rounds again. There's a rumor again. Of another Metroid Prime. I was like, stop it. <laughs> Don't give me hope. And I put that on this list before that article. So see, I'm willing it into existence. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, there is rumors floating around that it's like the announcement is eminent for i think it was just the remake of metroid prime but still you guys remember when the announcement was in, imminent for the uh, Star Fox racing game with fc yeah hey, me too man me too hey, <laughs> trolling on nintendo's part really they're like you know what i'll show these like here's a a good old leak and see what they think about oh, Star Fox racing and then the leaker ran with it and everyone picked it up and i'm sure they fired someone you think like that had to be their goal, just to kind of maybe, out yeah. Do. They were probably weeding out people like All right, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, but I mean, I I think Metroid Prime Four is a throwaway because we don't know anything about it, even if it exists. Yeah. yeah. Um, Although it also could be like just randomly in Nintendo Direct in like <laughs> April. <laughs> yeah, they're just like Metroid Prime Four, November twenty first. And then we'll April's be like, such what? an Ohio ass <laughs> month. Oh my god, that's such a good title too. 
<laughs> April's such an Ohio ass month. Best line I think you've ever had, Nick. I tell you, the best the best titles come from the game of the year episodes. Oh and man, we don't use them. It's yeah, it's true. Yeah, from fire and also game under. of the year day one or something done. Like that's all it'll be. Part one, I think, is all we'll do. Yeah. Yeah, I Not... said baby bitch ass mode, and. <laughs> was... Um. Next on this list, Resident too. Evil Four remake. Uh huh. It's, be... it's going to be incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I think that is the exact sentence I wrote. Um, I have played Resident Evil Four. Obviously, I have played it on yeah, PS2. I have played it on the GameCube. I've played it on Wii. I've played it in VR. And you know what? That game still fucking holds up. I've seen the video. I've seen the gameplay of what they're doing for Resident Evil 4. And I also saw where you posted that they're not making changes. That's good. Well, that's really not, good. Not, not changes. No cut content. No cut content. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So that means everything that's good. That there should be there. But then they yes. also were like, there's a lot more stuff. Which yeah. means that they could fuck stuff up. They could fuck I'm stuff up good. by adding it. I am very hopeful for this game because everything I have seen from this game looks absolutely amazing. You know what? Clistro Protocol says a lot. You know what? That's t- <laughs> that's totally fair, but I expect the people... Clistro Protocol made it suddenly. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sad that you just said that, but I, I do not think that this game will be bad. I think this game will be incredible. I am very excited for this. This is probably my second or third most looked forward to game of the year. <laughs> well, obviously it's not that great then, is it? Uh, no, that just that speaks. No, 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 no. That speaks volumes of the amount of games we're getting in 2023. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bayonetta Origins raised in the last team, and I put that on there because I think it's interesting, but I don't think it deserves to be. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not really feeling it. I'm like, I think we talked about it last last week. This game's mm-hmm. freaking sixty dollars. Like, yeah, when you told me that, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Excuse me. I think it looks like a twenty dollar game, so it they does. Really, they really need to justify forty dollar difference. So we'll see. I'm excited about what I've seen. I'm excited that they're keeping Bayonetta alive. I am anticipating playing this game at some point. Mm-hmm. I forgot to put something on this list. I'm so sad. Is it is it worth fighting for? Yes. <laughs> no, it'll only be me that fights for it, though. Sadly. Well, if you don't think it's gonna, if you don't think it's gonna add anything to the category, don't put it on. I, I think it does add to the category, okay. but it's specifically something I'm super interested in. So, yeah. It's up to you. Uh, I'm putting it. I'm putting it just because I want to put it. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, of course. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the rest of the titles on this, I really can't speak too much about. So someone really, I don't, really, I mean, I don't care enough about Dragon or uh, Final Fantasy. Dead Space, I'm excited for, but it's a remake, and I hope it's good. I think you need um, to start looking a little bit at Final Fantasy 16, my friend. Uh, Remedy has been disappointing lately, so I don't have much high hopes. For the that. fuck are you talking about? You literally just shat on Remedy like two categories go. No, no, that is not fair. I literally said they did that just for a paycheck. That is not fair. (laughs) Control is so fucking good. Control is fucking incredible. That is not fair to Remedy. And the DLC for Alan Wake inside of Control? Fucking chef's kiss. So good. So good. Shut the fuck up, Mike. (laughs) Uh, Street Fighter Six fighting game. Don't care. Stalker. Nick, uh, is it time for you to jump in real quick? You're the fighting <laughs> game man here. I mean, <laughs> listen. I know what's in Mike's wheelhouse, and I know Street Fighter Six is not in his wheelhouse. Yeah, that's fair. Exactly. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't. It's a beautiful looking game. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yes, but, I yeah, love yeah. the aesthetic of Street Fighter Six, and I love everything I've seen from the gameplay of it. That's why it's on this list. And I mean, I can't be upset at anyone being excited for this game. Like, it, it looks to me like it is a good fighting game. It's mm-hmm. just, like Nick said, it's... it's you don't play fighting game. games. Yeah. It's not, not something you go for. Yeah. Or you don't play, like, tournament fighting games. You, you'll play, like, party fighting games, like Smash Yeah, Brothers. party fighting games are fun. I don't... Yeah. My problem with, like, Street Fighter and Tekken is... And even, like, Mortal Kombat, like, it's the combos. Like, I just don't have the time for them, mentally. So, I just... 
That's it fair. just takes too much to learn certain characters. That is fair. That is fair. And unless you're like you can't just sit like I can't just sit down and like randomly pick up a different character and be like, oh I'm gonna play as Ryu today because I mm. want to play as Ryu. Like you have to be like, let me look at the manual and figure out how to do these combos. Like not fun. to an extent, but I do feel like there are certain combos that are universal for characters in games such as Street Fighter or Guilty Gear, I don't feel like you can do that for something like Mortal Kombat. I feel like Mortal Kombat is a completely different beast, and I think Nick knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> but, like, I think, like, a quarter circle forward to, like, a low punch, high punch, you know, medium, whatever, that sort of thing, that's a pretty universal combo you can throw in in any character and and probably land yourself a nice combo with them but pretty I mean, easily at the same time though it's like if i had someone over who's never played like a fighting game before i can't yeah. have a controller and be like let's play street fighter 6 yeah like, yeah you're right you're right you're 100 percent right yeah and i mean the, those would be like the two scenarios where i play it so it's just kind of like they just they just don't do anything for me like, that's it, fair are they bad no i mean i totally get why people like that mm-hmm. um and when i like when i had the, i think the last like real ish fighting game i had was soul Calibur, and i learned that's like, a good game really well and that was fun but like after that i was just like okay yeah. yeah and even like soul Calibur is like another kind of tier of fighting game similar to like doa where it's just like those are just fun fighting games they're not really meant to be taken seriously i think i think nick can understand where i'm coming from with that because like you, Soul Calibur, you can fuck around, so fuck around enough with Soul Calibur. You can fuck enough with uh, fuck around enough with both Soul Calibur and DOA that you can have enjoyment in those yeah. two games. Not as much uh, as without, Smash, but obviously yeah. exactly, exactly. Smash yeah. is its own thing. Smash really transcends fighting games, in my opinion. <laughs> I, so, story about or small story about somebody local to my area. There's a guy who places very high, like bracket wise, regularly. Did like, and he's been playing for years. Did mm-hmm. not own the game until this past Christmas. Wow, that's fucking nuts. Impressive. So like, that's definitely the difference between like Smash and like yeah, Street Fighter and Tekken. Where you got to learn inputs and jumpings and blockings and all that and fun cancels shit. and combos and this that and the other yeah. And pokes. Yeah, bread and butter stuff. To, mm-hmm. to rank really highly in Smash without actually owning it, it's still impressive. yeah. That that is really cool. I like that. Um, yeah, but yeah, I guess that's probably not going to be on this list. <laughs> um, I don't know. You have Dead Space, and you didn't talk about Dead Space. I mean, I'm excited for Dead Space just because I want it to be good, but I I don't have any standing to like put it anywhere on this list. Okay, uh, I, just, I will I tell want you... it to be good. I do, especially too. because of Callisto Protocol. Yeah, that that yes. I think that's why I put it on this list. Callisto Protocol was so bad mm-hmm. and disappointing that I have to put all my faith into Dead Space to restore my faith in sci-fi horror. That's totally fair. Yeah. Um, I got it. So I, I agree with you. Um, not necessarily to restore my faith in it, but like to restore my faith in big AAA sci-fi horror that's not made by Capcom. Uh, I would. <laughs> it, it, it would have to be Dead Space doing well. I, 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 I'm cautiously super optimistic about the Silent Hill titles that are coming out. Like they look awesome, and one of them's made by a developer who does really good stories and everything. But they didn't. They've never done a Silent Hill game. But like they're Japanese and they make. Uh, Nick, you know um, the game When They Cry. No. Uh, okay, hold on. Um, what is it called in Japanese? What is the game in Japanese? Uh, and they cry. What is this game in Japanese? Higarashi no Kari ni. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Higarashi. Yeah, that's who's making the new Silent Hill game. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like, okay, okay, all right. I'm watching you. I hope this is good. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> But uh, I didn't put that on the list because uh, that's that's an optimistic thing. But everything else on this list, um, I- I've put on here. So I've got Alan Wake two here. I think, like I said, Remedy's been crushing it with like Control. They did really good with the original Alan Wake and the side game of Alan Wake, even though that was just like a little uh, Xbox Live Arcade game. But Control is one of my favorite games 
that I have played, uh, like, period, in, like, the last ten years. It's just so good. And it showed that they could still do horror, action, adventure, that sort of thing, with, like, a bit of mystery to it, and this, that, and the other. And then they even put Alan Wake into Control, and it was like, hell yes, this is awesome. Because it bridged the gap between the two worlds, and it showed that there's, like, a whole another universe, essentially, where there is, like, essentially a cinematic universe where Control and Alan Wake exist in the same world and the same universe, and as such, a lot of stuff that's from Control could come over into Alan Wake 2 and also kind of explain things that could happen in Alan Wake 2, or vice versa, or they could just completely ignore each other. But either way, it showed that they were still really good at horror, they were still really good at action games, and it just, it was, it was so good, and I'm so excited for Alan Wake 2 ever since I saw it announced. I'm I'm just that's that's probably like my number one pick to be completely honest. Uh and Mike, what I wanted to say to you is I know it's not your wheelhouse, right? Mm-hmm. But you liked you liked Game of Thrones before it became shitty. I know that for a fact. And that's why I think you should pay attention to Final Fantasy sixteen. Because it literally just looks like Final Game of Fantasy Thrones. Game. What? I said, have you ever got to the end of a Final Fantasy game? It's going to yeah. end just like Game of Thrones, Brandon. It's coming. What? Yeah. What? That's what always happens. That nah, 15th oh, ending was great. 10's ending was great. Well, you know what? 3's ending, ending was great. 6's ending, ending was great. 4's ending got weird. Ten, Yeah, 9's ending was great. Ten's yeah. Ending was no, 8's ending got fucking weird. 4's ending is weird. You fight your brother on the moon and he's a space exactly. wizard. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's like, not weird. Is a Game of Thrones ending right there. They probably did a better job. First off, if Game of Thrones, through. if because I have avoided Game of Thrones successfully for the entirety of its exi- uh, existence, if somebody had told me, "Oh man, so disappointed by the last episode of Game of Thrones," and they were like, "Yeah, there was like some fight with a space wizard on the moon," I'm <laughs> watching it. <laughs> back to back in one weekend the whole series <laughs> that's fair that's fair but no I, I do think Final Fantasy 16 is trying to appeal more to like the audience of like Game of Thrones and that sort of thing and I think them going the much darker fantasy route uh, setting you know similar to like Witcher Game of Thrones or whatever is going to work really well for them I think it will do better than their boy band setting from Final Fantasy XV. Correct. And um, I liked Final Fantasy XV. I, I know it has issues, but I liked Final Fantasy XV. Uh, elements of it. But especially all the DLC. All the DLC was really good in Final Fantasy XV. Um, not so much the original the ending. Like, lightning ended up becoming like God. That's that's 13. That's yeah. 13. We're 13, talking about yeah. 15. So it, 15's the one where you are a spoiled, snot-nosed little brat prince who uh, who hangs out with his friends and goes and does things because he feels like it. And then, whatever, he, your father gets murdered and usurped by a guy who came out of fucking nowhere who makes himself into, essentially, Satan and plunges the world into darkness. And you have to sleep for like 20 years inside of a coffin where you get woken up by Bahamut. The Lion King to me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Damn. Damn. Final Fantasy 15 is the Lion King. (laughs) I never even thought of that. Hmm. Well then. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, thanks for putting that thought in my head. But no, that that game was fun. I liked that game. Uh, But 16 looks really good. Looks like it's going like Witcher vibes, like Game of Thrones vibes, and I, I think it looks really cool. It looks really pretty. Yeah. It looks really pretty. 16, and I like uh, sixteen is definitely my pick for number one. Mine's Alan Wake too. Uh, Ishin is also on here, like a dragon Ishin, which is a Yakuza game that came out in 2013 that's being remade that was never released in English that I'm super excited for, and uh, takes place in like feudal Japan. During like the was it the Edo period? I don't fucking remember. During the family, I don't period. remember the name of the period that it was in. Ah, what is the period called? You should have played Persona Five better. What? Yeah. You paid attention in class. Oh shit, you're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, exactly. Um, what else have we not talked about on this list? It's the Edo period, light phase of the Edo period. There we go, the Bakumatsu Edo period. 
and it looks fun. It looks really good, and I've been waiting for it since 2013. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Uh, Stalker 2! Stalker 2! You want to talk about fucking horror game? Stalker 2! Why are, why are you being like, oh, uh, big name horror games don't exist? Stalker 2! It's right there! Yeah. Metro Exodus! It's right there! It's got too so, much It's too much punctuation. What is it? It's because it, Stalker... What is it's Stalker too Stalker? much punctuation. Is that a fake abbreviation? No, it's it's a real one. Uh, scavengers, trash pass, trespassers, adventurers, loners, killers, uh, explorers, and robbers. There it is. Whoa. Okay. Uh, Never knew that. Yeah. Um, basically, it's, it takes place after Chernobyl has exploded, and it caused a big like thing. I'm, I'm explaining the the original Stalker at this point, but uh, essentially, Stalker Two is a sequel to the other the original Stalker games, and this one, it looks incredibly pretty. It looks a lot more horror based than the past games because the past games they were more of like a Fallout kind of game, but like. If Fallout was extremely complicated and kind of was just like go do the thing without telling you what the thing was, and you just kind of had to explore the open world and figure out everything for yourself along the way, and it was like very, very advanced in the way that you like interacted with NPCs and the trading networks and everything, and it was like it, it was like a world you could actually live in when playing that game, and that's essentially what Stalker Two is looking to do. But it's looking to do it in a way that's like bringing into the you know new future technology. Everything's much more polished and looks just a lot better. The horror is like ramped up, where like there's even elements now where when you're in like radiation zones and that sort of thing, you have to like throw around. Like this was part of the initial game, but it seems like they've leaned heavily into it more so, where like you can throw around, throw around pieces to make sure like you're not going to step out into a zone that's going to just fucking combust your head and make you explode and that sort of thing. Um, and it's just it looks fucking incredible. I'm really excited for it, and the gameplay itself is going to be not like something anyone's played before because of the fact that so few people outside of PC gamers played Stalker. So when they play Stalker 2, it's going to be a whole nother beast for them. Uh, this is probably going to be an experience that like no one's had before uh, when it comes to like gaming. Because the way these worlds are made and the way this game is made is to make you feel like you were actually living in the world, uh, even with the, like, confusion and everything and making you, like, piece together things through, like, uh, having stories told to you while exploring the, like, out and about when you find, like, caravans and people that are exploring as well. And you're wanting to go into places that are, like, loot zones and, like, kill out all these monsters and whatnot, but you're not really going to know what's there when you go to do so so you're going to explore the world and learn about it just by being part of the world and i think taking that into you know modern day with like all this new technology is going to give this game and this series like a whole new breath of life similar to what happened with the witcher when we got the witcher 2 and the witcher 3 on consoles i think this is going to be one of those cases where this game actually is very well regarded uh, when it releases and people get to actually experience it because it is very different from the other games that have come out. You've got games like Metro Exodus that exist already, um, but this game is more about you creating your own story and experiencing the world, whereas Metro Exodus is like a linear game that also happens to have some open world elements where it's telling its own story instead of you creating it. And I think that's going to be really cool and people are going to really like this game because of that. There you go. That's it. Uh, it's Alan Wake, Resident Evil, and oh man, uh, damn. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the three horror games on here: Alan Wake, Resident Evil, and Stalker Two. Boom. Those are my picks. Oh. Mm, uh, let's eliminate things. Okay. No Bayonetta. No Bayonetta. I, I'm not interested in this one, especially now that I found out it's a $60 game. Absolutely not. Metroid Prime 4 shouldn't even be on this list because we don't know if it's releasing yep. ever. Nope. <laughs> uh, are you going to back Dead Space? Mm, I think there's better horror games on this list. Nick? 
I mean, you already know it's it's there for me. Okay, no, that's fine. We'll, I won't eliminate right away that. Um, um, Brandon did say Street Fighter. Are you gonna anyone gonna back Street Fighter? I will also drip back Street Fighter because Street Fighter looks very Street Fighter good. looks really fucking good. and like a right yeah. step in the direction from Street Fighter Five because that game fucking sucked. Um, yeah, Street Fighter Five was garbage. Absolutely. Like yes, you can drop like a dragon. I just wanted to be able to mention that it's going to exist, and I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's Alan Wake two. Oh, wait, go on. Nick, what's your third? Oh, um, wait, what? Oh, uh, Dead Space FF sixteen and Street Fighter six for my three. Mm. Mm. Oh, this makes things interesting. Let's what's see. your pick, Mike? <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, I would do like Zelda, and then I'm trying to think what else I would probably put on there. Um, Dead Space is one of my favorite series, mm-hmm. so I'd probably put Dead Space. As okay. Well. Um, and then see, this is where it gets tricky. I don't really have much. Well, at least I, I don't really have any ho- horse for Street Fighter. Stock Understandable. Doesn't really do much for me either. I guess Resident Evil Four. Not Alan Wake Two. No. Did you not like the first Alan Wake? I, I thought it was good. I didn't love it. Okay. And Remedy right. has such a poor track record lately. What? <laughs> said, and Remedy has such a poor track record. They literally <laughs> made one bad game to fund good games. <laughs> Fuck off. <clears throat> Fuck off. Dude, play Control and then come back and say that. <laughs> and then you could shut your dumb ass up. Control is incredible. Okay, out of those... I don't know, we Street could drop Stalker 2 and Street Fighter 6, I think. Well, I guess it depends on where Street Fighter 6 is on Nick's list. Oh, that's a good question. Street Fighter 6 probably falls third for me. Okay. It's uh, FF16, Dead Space, and then Street Fighter 6. Is, is Stalker your third, Brandon? Mm, it was, but out of the ones you guys have picked, I gotta, like, I gotta pick and choose my battles now. <laughs> so, No. Well, you know, I'll be nice. I'll get rid of Zelda because I know neither of you guys are on board with that one. You're that correct. One before. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely correct with that. So on Resident Evil, we, I mean, we have to ditch one of these three. I would say ditch one. Only Wake 2 is my pick for number one. <laughs> That's the biggest issue. It's my pick for number one. <laughs> I thought Resident Evil 4 was supposed to be the most amazing game of all time. No, I said it would be an incredible game. It, I didn't say that Alan Wake 2 wouldn't be a fucking masterpiece. It's better than the original in every way. Which means it I, has I, Okay, I never said that it would be better than the original in every way. I don't even know how where that fucking thing came from. Uh, the original is already fucking fantastic for Resident Evil 4. I don't know how it's going to be different. I don't know any of that stuff yet. I just said, in its own right, Resident Evil 4 will be incredible. Those were my exact words. You had me write it down in a text document, and it still sits there to this day. But you know what, Brandon? If it's at least not as good as the original, that's a disappointment. No, that is not what I'm talking about. A, a game can be different than the original and still be fucking incredible. See, for instance, possibly Dead Space, which is also on this list. We will see. I don't think Dead Space is going to be as good as the original, though. I don't either. That's why it's not on my top three. And that's why I don't like it being in the top three for this. I just want it to be like somewhere in the vicinity of the original. That's what I'm hoping for. Legitimately, I think the game I most look forward to is Alan Wake 2, but I'm not going to win that one. So if I had to, Resident Evil 4 would be my pick for uh, the most look forward to game, most anticipated game. I mean, I'd be willing to just Dark Horse Final Fantasy 16. I don't think I could do that. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to be right here with Nick. I I don't think I can do that. (laughs) What do you think, Nick? That's the question. What in terms of have what? Have you have you even played Alan Wake, Nick? The original? No, I've never played Alan Wake. Damn, damn. And Mike said it's just good. Mm-hmm. My experience of Alan Wake One is memeing it for having Verizon commercials in it. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> it's not even commercials; it's literal ads because of the fact that it was sponsored by <laughs> Verizon and Energizer. Dun, dun, dun. Something's got. To what get. do we want to be number one? For me, FF16. Fuck. <laughs> I said I would back. I would back anything except for Alan Wake for number one. Well, then just drop Alan Wake too. All right, all of mine get dropped. That's fine. I mean, I except Resident Evil Remake. One. Huh? I said I drop my number one. That's fine. Drop Alan Wake too, and then we decide where this goes. Dead Space is definitely number three for me. 
<laughs> so it's definitely not number one. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Between all of these, between the last two that's remaining, fuck. <laughs> we just, we just this is so of tough. Me hyped for Final Fantasy 16, Brandon. What's that? So you did such a good job of getting me hyped for Final Fantasy 16. Are you gonna vote for it? Well, I said I would vote for Final Fantasy 16. All right, fine. Let's vote for Final Fantasy 16 then, to make this easy. <laughs> you don't want to fight for. The best game of all time, Resident Evil 4 Remake. You just keep putting words in my mouth, and I want to fucking slap you. <laughs> just wait till March. You're going to be, the, you're, what you said is going to be so conflated. Actually, I should even just, I should do like one of those like horrible edits where they just take all these words. I'll have you like describing a different game, and then I'll just I... slap Resident <laughs> Evil 4 at top of that. <laughs> Every nice thing you've said about games on this list. Mm hmm. It's just gonna be like I'll you know I'll take everything nice you say in your top ten, <laughs> and I'll just exchange Resident Evil Four for whatever the title of the game is. I think you've said it enough this episode that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> be like, look, Brandon, you clearly said that Resident Evil Four oh is the God. number one game of twenty twenty two. Like I don't know. What you're Fucking hell, dude. Um, anyways, most anticipated upcoming game of 2023, Final Fantasy 16 with Runners Up Dead Space and Resident Evil 3. Yay! Yay. All right, next category is best story. Just a reminder, this is a spoiler category. So if you don't want to be spoiled, this is the last category of the episode. So you can just end the episode now. That's a good place to end if you don't want to hear this category. Otherwise... You can keep listening. You've been warned. Anyways, best story, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, God of War Ragnarok, mm -hmm. Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, Bayonetta 3. I'm out of out of uh, respect for Nick. Yeah. I am going to give only partial spoilers for Ragnarok and not anything major. I would like you to stay here because I do want you to have a horse in this race for my explanation of Ragnarok. I mean, I will say before you even get into it, yeah, it would like throwing a dart at the board here. Ragnarok would yeah. already get my vote for best story. Ragnarok slaps ass cheeks like, like the nice like, kind of slap. Not, <laughs> not playing any of these games, <laughs> literally not playing any of these games, my vote for best story would be one, two, and three. Ragnarok, Stanley Parable, Bayonetta, but. <laughs> just I haven't played any of them. I've actually that's wrong. I've played regular Stanley Parable. I yeah. haven't played Ultra Deluxe. And the so. Ultra Deluxe has some interesting stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, and I haven't got to play Ultra Deluxe either yet. Yet, but I would actually have Xenoblade, Ragnarok, Stanley Parable, uh, yeah, Bayonetta, uh, Bayonetta three. Because all right, we're going over it. We're already in this. We're in this. We're deep in this. Yeah, Bayonetta three has got this issue that I have with the game, where the issue is it feels like. There are just so many spots, so many Hollywood movie moments where it's like, holy shit, look at the thing that just happened. And then you think about it and you're like, why did that happen? And I feel like that happens a lot in the Bayonetta 3 story. Uh -huh. Bayonetta 3 is all killer. And then, like, there is a story there, but, like, it doesn't matter, really. I know it's expanding upon the lore and everything with Cereza and uh, the alternate dimensions and stuff like that, but I just don't feel like it's anywhere near as good as any of the other ones on this list. No, I agree, too. And um, I also feel like I could just turn my brain off and just play Bayonetta 3 and not even pay attention to the story and not give a shit. And you can't really do that with any of the other three here. Which I, I think is honestly the best way to play Bayonetta 3. So, yeah, I was sitting there trying to like dissect the story while playing it, and I was just like... I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so just to like kind of like break down the Bayonetta story stuff that's going on. So you have all the multiverse stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, I don't even remember what the alien things are called. Human alien things, whatever they it's, are. They're fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the dumb things are, they come and they like take over universes. And each one basically like the only anything that can stand up to them is Bayonetta. So different bayonetas. Yeah, and so like you know, the first you know one, the game starts off. You see Bayonetta die, mm -hmm. and then and your what's her name? Who I already forgot her name, even though I hate uh, her. Kitty. Much. She called her Kitty. I don't yeah, know, remember what her name. That's not yeah, what I don't remember what her name actually is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kitty. 
So Kitty yeah. is just like, oh no, I'm gonna cry. And then she like leaves. And then the, the rest of the game is just going to all these different like multiverse things. Some of mm-hmm. them are really cool because you get like super like pop star Japanese bayonetta and you get like, Viola. There we go. Oh yeah, Viola. Yeah, 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 yeah. Voila. So, <laughs> voila. <laughs> yeah. So I mean that stuff all kind of like it that stuff's interesting. But then it just like goes into like wild territory. Like you do find out, and Brandon, I'm just gonna tell you this right now. No, it's totally fine. Do do please do. So the bayonetta you see at the beginning of the game is the bayonetta from Bayonetta One. Okay, that's what I assumed. The bayonetta from Bayonetta Two also exists separately. Yes, I also assumed that as well. It was something that we theorized, but the game makes it clear yeah. those are different bayonettas. So yes, so you have that going on. Then there's some weird shit like what's oh, God? I cannot remember anyone's name in this game. Um. Luca. Okay. Luca is like some from like some fairy realm. Okay. Yeah. And he's like the fairy realm king. And he has some like eternal love triangle thing with Bayonetta. It kind of reminded me of like, did you guys watch the new Matrix? No. The no. Matrix? Because I'm not okay. I'm not done. I actively actually avoided it. Yeah, Same. Well, you really didn't miss terribly <laughs> much. But there was this kind of thing that was kind of like Neo and Trinity. Or like eternally connected, and every time that they rebooted the Matrix, they like they would come together, and it's basically the same thing with Luca and Bayonetta. Like every multiverse, those two come together as like a love interest, and then so you have that, and then at the end of the game, the the new Bayonetta dies, and then but Luca's like, oh, I'm gonna go to hell with you. Well, I mean, generally she doesn't really die. I don't even know. She goes to hell, <laughs> and Luca's like, well, I'm gonna go with you. So he does, and then. Viola becomes the new Bayonetta because she's the love child of the two of them. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And so that's how the that's that's how they set up the next game. Basically, like Vi- Viola being like, "Oh, I'm gotta go kill some demons or angels or whatever the fuck." And and I'm like, I don't want to play as this dumb bitch for a game. Like <laughs> this is not Bayonetta. So do not call Bayonetta four and have me play as Viola because I will lose my shit. Um, but it's wild. I mean, it's completely unpredictable. You have no clue what's going on this whole time. Mm-hmm. Like John's got weird shit going on. She's in like some weird side scrolling missions. And then there's all these weird like things Oh, the the sense. fucking stealth ones where like for some reason you could just take a shower and it actually adds to your point total for yeah. taking a shower mm-hmm. in the We're stealth missions. And then like one of the like aliens will like peek at you and then come inside the shower and then you fucking snap their neck and kill them. And she's just says something like, I've killed people for less or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Um so I mean that is what it is. It's it is a story. Ah, uh... Interesting it sure it. is. I don't think it's the best story. It's a story of all time. That's what you're yeah. making it. So. It does have a beginning, middle, and end, is what you're telling us. It does have a beginning, middle, <laughs> and end a climax. End I think that just keeps you guessing. Yeah. Um. Literally keeps you guessing because you have no fucking clue what's going on most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't help that the game is kind of a mess at times when things are going on. It's just like all over the place with its graphic style and whatnot and, and all, this it's frame rate style, and it's, it's yeah <laughs> and it's but everything you were in the shitty frame rate multiverse where you only get 13 frames you gotta go to a different universe yeah, damn that's... then we need to f- that hopefully bayonetta 4 goes to that universe when it releases <laughs> well, I just, I we can really that... use double the frames <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, we're in the ninety frames a minute. Ninety frames. Oh shit! <laughs> this is the Eurobeat universe. <laughs> Dude, uh, I feel like if this game was running at a stable frame rate, even if it was just sixty or thirty, even this game would be better <laughs> than it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's just it's 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 just it's just got a lot going on, and there was the, I mean, you could tell obviously they had some weird development issues going yeah. on through this game. Um, mm-hmm. I saw something, and I don't remember where it was from, but like, like those Neilheim stages or whatever, like you know okay. what I'm talking about. Like uh, weird remind area, me, the grassy area where it's like the island. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That kind of like interconnects the stages. Yes. So I don't remember how this came about, but it was at least theorized that that was supposed to be like open world. You could like, uh. kind of, like go around and do whatever, but. 
it had to get cut for some reason and so probably because it's on the switch i don't think so (laughs) i mean it's like it's just it turns into this weird thing that doesn't make any sense like it's just like you don't do anything there so walk from a to b so Mm -hmm. it's like why does this even exist um it's like because it should have been like a hub area presumably Mm -hmm. that just got like turned into corridor (laughs) i don't know makes no sense it exists um yeah so you just have weird stuff like that i don't know it's bayonetta not my favorite bayonetta story of the three um but it is interesting and it's a story and i'm sure hopefully they do something good with the sequel i just don't want to play as viola and i hope that she doesn't exist anymore what will the world ever comes next go to a different multiverse where she doesn't exist that's all well there you go yeah perfect and there's there's some whole like trick storyline too i don't know bayonetta and john were tricked i don't even remember how it worked it was just whatever very whatever yeah so that's my thoughts on bayonetta 3 all I'm right i'm talking since that's i mean i could talk about three of the four of these stanley parable ultra deluxe i can't really there's so many different things in this thing that i really don't think i could like articulate everything that's going on so if you played stanley parable original yeah yes you know you had like the narrator thing and you like walks you through all these things and you know there's lots of different endings and you know whatever so the ultra mm-hmm. deluxe has new ending and okay. changes some of the endings depending on what you do like one of the things you can do is you get this like reassurance bucket and it's just like this bucket you carry around and if you go and complete the endings like you normally would while you hold the bucket it changes them dramatically like they're wildly different than what they originally were um which is funny there, but there's also different things too like you can go into like a new content area and then it will take you to an area that's called the stanley parable too and mm. it's like a sequel and like as you complete different things in the game like it actually like will generate like a title screen that just keeps on going up so it'll be like mm-hmm. the stanley parable 3 and then it will give you like just some randomly generated like tagline or whatever for it to like fast and furious or okay. whatever. And, like if you Google it, they make no sense. They're like the Stanley Parable 4, the turtle's back. Like, it just makes no sense. But it just will keep on adding on Stanley Parables, as far as I can tell, to infinity. Like, I don't know if there's an end to it. They just keep going. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's just, it, there's just lots of just random, like, funny things. It's it's just very, it's very much Stanley Parable, and it's very much self-referential, especially some of the new endings. Like, some of them will call into, like, question like some of the reviews that stanley parable got it looks like they actually pulled real reviews that were written about the game that the seems like something that. they would do yeah yeah that makes out. uh which was great i think they actually made fun of steam and stuff too like all sorts of things like um <laughs> just very very comical very fun um and just all the things that they had on there just were excellent like it's just very well made very comical very random i don't even know any other way to describe it but that's just it's fun um and then the, the other meteor story would be xenoblade chronicles 3 this one actually like is coherent but how does it work so i think as i teased earlier in the game of the year stuff <laughs> xenoblade chronicles 3 is a direct sequel to one and two separately because those games exist in different universes okay but now it's one universe kind of thing um but how do i explain how it works okay xenoblade chronicles 1 let's start there for a hot second Mm-hmm. If you played it, made it to the end, there is this moment where the scientists they like reboot the Earth and they turn it into a new the new planet with like the fighting robots. Following me so far? Yes. Yeah. All right. So then, when you played Xenoblade Chronicles two, at the end of the game, when you get to like the the pivotal moment, you run into the same scientist again, and okay. you realize that when the the world got reset, he kind of got trapped in between two universes. Like these. Half of his body is in the bad universe, or the original U- Xenoblade 1 universe, and half of his body is in the Xenoblade 2 universe. Okay. Um, so when he gets destroyed or whatever, like that universe is reset too. So now you got two reset universes. Well, now that he's gone, those universes start to collide with each other. They Because they were originally one, they want to be one again. I don't know, think like magnets. They want to be together or whatever. Yeah, okay. So they're heading back towards each other. Um, okay. And so, like, the story of this game is, like, in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, like, you are in a a combined... Universes have recombined again. So, you have characters and 
races of characters from Xenoblade 1 and 2 living together with um, landmarks, like geological landmarks that are from both games, because you can see like where they merge. Well, the big twist in this game is that when these two worlds collide, or are about to collide, they realize like, hey, when they collide, they'll destroy everything. So they came up with this system, and you played Xenoblade Chronicles X, Brandon, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Remember how they had that like contraption that was like, hey, we're going to send you to this other planet, but your bodies won't survive or something? Sort of, yes. I so do know what like, you're talking about. Yeah, we put your like spirit into this computer or whatever, and then we'll rebuild your bodies once you get to the planet or something. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what they did in this game. Like They're like, hey, we're going to take the spirits of everything that ever existed and stick it to this machine, and then once the world's recombined, we'll re-release you and everyone into the, into the world. Well, the big twist is like, that just never happened. Like the planet, like the th- the universes were supposed to collide, but then that machine just like for whatever reason decided to take over everything and stop it from doing what it was supposed to do. So time is basically like frozen, and you're living inside like basically I don't know like the Matrix version of these two mm-hmm. planets. You don't know it, and like in between when Xenoblade One and Two took place to when the game takes place like thousands of years in game have taken place. However, okay. in like the real time, because time's frozen, only seconds have gone by. Like you like nothing has like actually happened. Okay. Um this is hard to explain. Like Yeah, it does sound very difficult to explain. <laughs> so you get into like these weird things where like some characters from like the first two games are dead because mm-hmm. so much time has passed. And then you get into weird things too where like some characters are alive. Still, because you know their their races or whatever allows them to exist for a long period of time. Then you also get into this weird thing because this is like a matrix like thing. When your okay. characters die in the game, they're kind of like recycled and put back into. They're basically like reborn after all the people that are there die because you only have like a ten year lifespan in this game. Like everyone only lives ten years, and then they are returned to. I don't know, whatever the fuck they go. And then, okay. but unbeknownst to everyone, their memories are erased and they're reborn. And then they just go through this again. And it's just a big, I forgot what the bad guys are called in this game. But basically, they are just like playing games with each other to kind of shift energy around for them to consume. Mm. Yeah, it's weird, but it's great. That is incredibly weird the way you're describing it. Yeah, and I think it's just a very hard thing to like explain. Like obviously the game's better at like pacing it out and like mm-hmm. getting you things, you know, from point A to point B. Um of but course. like characters like Noah and I don't even remember what the main girl's name is at this point. But they they actually had been like I don't know, I guess like Bayonetta and, and the Matrix, like kinda like the every generation that they exist together, they always come back together. Like they are like eternal love people and Mm. yeah so they do that and then but then just like the matrix as well there's like a city of like humans that are not tied to this this like looping thing that are born because i think people who were had kids somehow in that 10 years that they've existed and then and then they just you know multiplied and then they you know they had kids and built this big old city um so i don't know it's kind of like the xenoblade matrix i guess (laughs) in some way but, like, some of the characters, I don't think they ever come right out and say it, but, like, some of the characters are implied to be descendants of characters from, like, the first two games. Because, like I said, like, generations have passed since then. So some of them are, like, characters that are presumably, like, I think the, the theory is, like, Noam could be Shulk's child. And okay. the other one could be one of um, Rex's kids. Because Rex had, like, a whole harem of children. <laughs> As shown by the right. ending of that game, <laughs> where it looked like he had a, at least like a child with three of the different characters in the game. So, yeah, no, it's just it's 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 wild, but it's good, and it definitely is. The game has a bit more of an emotional payoff. There's definitely a bit more like sacrifice that goes on. Uh, one of the main characters sacrifices themselves to kind of set in motion a series of events that will like eventually lead to this like matrix esque world collapsing and like the restoration of like time. So I don't know. It's really good. I do like it. I think it's great. I I think it was probably like the best story of the games that I had played this year. 
And I think it has a better story payoff than Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. Okay. Um, fortunately or unfortunately for listeners at home, it is a very difficult story to convey, which means that even if you just heard what I said, it probably makes no fucking sense. And you should play the game because then you will understand it more. Because it does make sense. Like, unlike Bayonetta's story, it does make sense. Like, it is comprehensible. Um, but there's just, there's a lot going on. Then it's just, it's, you just kind of take it in bits and pieces. So, I know those are my three games. That's all I got. Unless you had questions on either, any of those stories. I don't exactly have any questions <laughs> on any of them. Because they're kind of all hard to explain. So, I can super easily explain God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. Alright, so... Uh, this is going to spoil God of War 2018, so I'm going to go ahead and say that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to explo- spoil that right now. So the end of God of War 2018, we all find out that uh, Atreus, which is um, uh, Kratos' son, is actually Loki. Mm-hmm. And um, this story is more about him finding out that he is supposed to, essentially, due to fate go and work for Odin. Like, uh, just completely... We don't really know why, but possibly b- betray his father and everyone else and go work for the main villain. Yeah. Because um, it was shown in the prophecy that was written on the walls, and this is a whole story about Atreus um, reuniting with his people and that sort of thing as well as Kratos, because we get different chapters that are split up between the two of them. And Kratos is um, reconnecting with like people in general, on like an emotional level, in a way where he's kind of becoming more vulnerable with age and that sort of thing. All because, according to one of the prophecies that we find out about, by the end of this game, he is supposed to be dead. This is found out by uh, Atreus very early on in the game. And the entire game is essentially him coming to grips and trying to defeat his destiny, go against tradition, and so that the outcome will be different and so that he will not lose his father like he lost his mother. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing has to deal with a lot of uh, connecting with different characters, people who were uh, good guys at one point, but like, for instance, at the end of the first game, you killed this one woman's son, and she's having a really hard time accepting you as being a person like that's a part of you know their side anymore because of the fact that you killed her son even though you had to because his mind was poisoned due to Odin and Thor and whatnot and just all of them causing him to go after uh, Kratos in the original game and since you had to kill him in the original game now she just will not accept you as an ally but you need her help and you need other people's help in this game as well so you like hunt down other people but they're kind of broken due to the way this world has been uh, basically going over time and getting worse and worse and the whole game's plot is essentially three different things as Kratos, he's not told by his son that he's going to die. So when you're playing as Atreus or Loki, you're trying to find a way to stop destiny from happening. When you're playing as Kratos, you're trying to understand why Loki keeps vanishing, what is going on with your son, and is he actually going to betray you like you saw in the prophecy where Atreus betrays everyone and goes and works for odin so it's kind of a bit of a betrayal thing is he won't he will he that sort of thing going on between the two of them on top of all that it's about um kratos kind of opening up more and explaining to the people in this world yeah i was the god of war but you know back in the day this isn't like the first time that i might lose my son this is a case of me you know, I, I've I've dealt with pain and loss before in the past and opening mm-hmm. up more about that and talking to people like he talks to this one woman, the one who was like not wanting to be allies with him anymore because he killed her son. She's like, you wouldn't know. And he's like, actually, I killed my entire family by mistake when I was younger because I was betrayed by just a little the, oopsie. The, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. so he like, he kind of drops that whole bombshell on her and she's like, holy shit, I didn't know, you know, and then like that kind of makes her be like. I don't want to kill you, but I also don't want to forgive you. And it kind of uh, 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 goes a route where it's like showing actual emotion between the two characters where it's like, 
I'm still upset at what you've done, and I'm not just going to randomly forgive you like what you would have in a normal story or whatever. Because, oh, he went through some bad stuff, a one-dimensional story. Oh, now I understand he went through some bad stuff. It's okay that he killed my son. No, she doesn't drop that. She doesn't forgive you. She doesn't have that moment. She just has that moment where she accepts that she needs to work with you. And there's a lot of different things like that. Like you meet another character, I'm not going to say who his name is, who who's like someone that you've been trying to hunt down this entire time. And when you get to him, he's just completely broken. He is a shell of his former self. He is completely useless. He will not help you in any way whatsoever. And you needed him. You absolutely needed him. So it kind of like goes to a place where it's like, Atreus uh, or Loki has been trying to get to this person for many, many chapters. And when you finally get to them, when you finally break them out, when you finally get them, they've been tortured for so long. They've been through so much, the years, months, weeks, you know, decades that they've been locked up in this place that they've just given up all hope. They've just completely given it up. They've completely made a vow of, I'm not going to kill, I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to do this, that, and the other. And essentially this whole game is telling a story of just multiple different characters trying to find their own way through Ragnarok, which is going to be brought about. And it's the story of each individual character that you meet along the way, as well as a closing of the entire series, supposedly, of God of War as a whole. And honestly, it works very, very well, giving a lot of characterization and development to characters that kind of really haven't had it past, or I'm angry in the past. And it actually feels very natural, and it's very, very, very well done. So personally, even though I don't think this is the best game that released this year, I do think this is the best written game that released this year. Because the story actually feels like a story. And that is somewhat to its detriment as well, because it does feel like at times I'm just watching a story play out. I'm just holding my left stick forward and walking through. But this isn't a category about gameplay. This is a category about story. And when it comes to story, I think God of War Ragnarok does it fucking phenomenally. So there you go. Okay. Is Atreus still a bitch? That's the most of it. I, so several people do <laughs> not like it. him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Several people don't like him. As I played more and more of this game, I liked him more due to the whole fact of him feeling kind of relatable. Like, I can't give out the information I need, and I just need this, like, adult person to trust me. And, like, I gotta find a way to get him to do so, and this and that and the other. And it's like, okay, well, it feels like an actual kid, and it feels like a kid that's, like, growing up. And I'm like, this is very well written for for a kid like yeah he was supposed to be annoying in the first game he was a very young kid essentially you know he was he was just getting into his teens and whatnot he, he was young just in general and then this and he was dealing with grief and all this other stuff and this one he's dealing with his own destiny and who he may be in the end and what may happen to like his entire view of the world and i think that makes him a much more likable character this time around than he was in the original game like very much so okay you see character development and it's good character development and that's that's how i feel about it so what are we thinking for this category as is your call i i personally i it's god of war ragnarok xenoblade 3 from everything you explain and stanley parable like that's that's like the three, I know, obviously, because we already kind of talked about how Bayonetta three is just like, eh, <laughs> you know. Sure. So, mm -hmm. um, but then I guess you would have to talk about like what way you want them listed. And obviously, I played Ragnarok, and you played Chronicles three, and we didn't play each other's game, so it's kind of difficult there. Um, but I mean, I th I think Ragnarok is a fucking excellent story. I think. If it was any other category, Ragnarok wouldn't win it. But I think just for pure story, uh, it's it's great. The best way to call this category is just let Nick decide which one takes the first. Um, uh, I have to go with God of War, only because yeah. like only because like most of the games that you talked about don't make any fucking sense, Mike. I'm sorry, but like Xenoblade, I was like, nope, that don't make no sense. <laughs> and then um, what's it? I mean. Bayonetta's Bayonetta, but um, yeah, I'm about to say God of War probably takes it first. Okay. Yeah, so do God of War and then runners up Xenoblade and Stanley Parable. Hell yeah. I'm down yep. for that. Oop, wrong color. 
I, I really wish I could have told more about this story, but I just don't want to spoil it for the two of you. And I would really like you guys to uh, play it. And it I mean, is Nick. You can give me your thoughts later, like through text or whatever. But Mike, you can you can actually tell me with words at some point. It is on my list. Yes. <laughs> It is on my list. All right, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to. I know this is just like weird to like bring this up and everything, but uh, a Sony property did just win, so I do want to say this for both of you: The Last of Us on HBO is fucking excellent. Watch it. <laughs> I haven't started it yet. Oh, yeah. It's very good. <laughs> I've heard even like some of the reviews that I've seen have been decent, and they've gotten to see it. I think like half the season. Yeah, see, I haven't got to see anything past the first 90 minutes, because the first episode's 90 fucking minutes long. But it's very, very good. Well, it follows the source material, material perfectly, and not only that, but it adds to it in ways that make sense. And it works really, really well. Okay. Yeah, we'll let you know. I was going to watch it yesterday. I did not. You but... definitely should. Check it out. Yeah. Let me know when you when you see it. I will. Nice. All right, let's wrap it up. Folks, thank you for listening to our Game of the Year episode 2022. Don't forget to find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. I can also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or you can leave us an uh, email at gamecrunchcast at gmail.com. Uh, Brandon, any final thoughts? Yeah. Uh, see you next week. <laughs> I know that you think Resident Evil 4 is going to be the best game of 2023, but you don't need to keep saying it as your final thoughts every week. <laughs> <laughs> please don't do that please do not do that <laughs> any final thoughts yeah I think Resident Evil 4 will be incredible <laughs> look now you're just giving me sound bites I, I know out for them. well every time I say something now I'm just gonna like say it robotically so it sounds like you've stitched it together now so it ruins your whole plan <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> We're gonna get AI Brandon just to say things. <laughs> yeah, the AI stuff's pretty incredible now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nick, any yes, final the thoughts? AI stuff is getting incredible, much like Resident Evil Four. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, any final thoughts? Resident Evil Four fucked my wife. <laughs> and you liked it <laughs> uh, anyway that said my name is Mike Anastasia you find me online Clutch Penguin and until next week game on games game. games <laughs>
I've there's been years where I was like, I played this in 2022. You know what I mean? Like, just, <laughs> this is definitely yeah. a game that I played. Yeah, I actually have one game like that, but it's because it's actually pretty long, and I also haven't played the DLC for it yet. So, so it's it's my number ten. 